So I'm wondering, can we start a new coffee trend? With Julia Child's help, of course. This is Jamie and Julia. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. A couple years ago, there was this Dalgona coffee. It's a big coffee trend, took the internet world by storm. Following year, espresso martini. Pretty self-explanatory. I'm thinking there's room for another one, another big coffee hit. There's this coffee thing, right? It seems to catch on, and there's a reason why. It's addictive and delicious and necessary and also addictive. And I've only had four cups today and that's completely normal. I'm in my ride or die, volume one of Mastering the Art of French Cooking from JC. And when I found this little recipe right here, souffle au café, coffee souffle. It has a ring to it. As soon as I heard that, I thought, well, hey, maybe this could be the next big thing in the coffee world. I've only made five other, five other souffles in my entire life. Of course, they're far from perfect, but there was a lot of lessons I learned making those, some techniques and experience that I need to carry forward into making today's coffee souffle and see if I can make the next coffee trend. That's how I'm gonna spend my day. Five chilled eggs. They're all cold, fresh out of the fridge. Now I wanna separate them and uh, apparently when they're cold, it's the best time to do it. So separate the whites from the yolks. It's tea time. Now this is just, these are all my ingredients, except for, wait, Actually, now this is everything I need. Mise en place the hell out of this thing. And when you're making a souffle, uh, you gotta do that because everything happens pretty quickly. But yeah, it's just gonna make life a lot easier, especially for moi. Truth be told, honestly, I've already tried to make this recipe the other day. I filmed it and everything. I'm redoing it because I didn't really like the results and it was everything to do with me. I wasn't prepared, I didn't prep anything, I just went at it, and I was messy and sloppy, clumsy, I didn't really want to cook. <sighs> Finished product was a result of all of that. So I'm hoping to just like turn over a new leaf here and give this thing a proper attempt the right way, okay. Like normal Joe Blow ramekins. So I gotta make sure I cover every square inch in this ramekin with butter. Every nook and cranny. So I need a pastry brush, if this is even a pastry brush. I don't know, like you can get a brush with actual bristles or this thing. I'm gonna do brush strokes upward and that's supposedly gonna encourage like the souffle to rise, I guess, because everything is trending up. It's from a video that I just watched moments ago. Pour some sugar into one souffle mold, just, you know, liberally. Move it all about in this ramekin. And instead of making a mess like I usually do, I'm just gonna, any excess sugar goes into the next ramekin. See, when you use your head, great things can happen. That works like wonders. Put those out of sight, out of mind. As I said, we're trying to do things a bit different today. Let's keep it a clean workstation for as long as possible. Shoots these scores. There's this like word that is all over this recipe right here. Boy, 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 boy. Apologies for how I pronounce boy. Actually, let's make sure I'm saying it correctly. Boy, boy, boy. Okay, so what is a boy? <laughs> there are three standard methods for making a souffle base. Bechamel, creme patisserie, or bouillie. Do I need to describe it? No, because I will describe by doing. I will show you how uh, I'm gonna make it by following along to the book. My favorite saucepan, three quarter ounce, 21 grams of flour. A total of a half a cup, 118 milliliters of milk. And I only need to take three tablespoons right now, pour it into the flour. Now I gotta blend that together and aha, I picked up something based on the feedback from most of you who told me to stop using metal whisks in my enameled cast iron saucepan. Okay, I'm sorry, first of all. Well, no, I'm sorry to myself because I got some new ones. Silicone. And uh, yeah, that's not gonna scratch anything. It's gonna, ooh, 
That works great. That works great. Thank you to everyone who suggested me pick this up. Yeah, yeah, I'm liking that. Put that over there. And then I got another smaller, smaller saucepan. Combine the rest of the milk and three tablespoons of coffee beans. Bring this to a boil. Turn the heat off, put a cover on it. Let this steep for five minutes. Pour the milk, strain the beans. So along with the rest of that milk, I need to add in two ounces, 57 grams of sugar. On a high heat, let's bring it to a boil. I gotta keep it stirring, keep it stirring. Uh, this is all the coffee flavoring that goes into this thing, which isn't a lot considering it's a coffee souffle. And I know this going in. So I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of my coffee just to kind of like punch it up a little bit. But keep it stirring, you jackass. I think that's the right call. You're really gonna get a good taste of coffee now. And stir until it's thickened up and take it off the heat. I gotta turn the page, man. So once it's off the heat, I gotta keep this beating for two minutes until it cools. Four egg yolks, first one goes in. Whisk it fast and furiously. Next one goes in, one by one. Mix, mix, mix. One ounce of softened butter, split in half. First half goes in, whisk that in. And uh, yeah, gonna need the, um, clean off the sides of the pan too while you're at it. In okay, go, bye. bye. In goes the other, sh in goes the other half of butter. And off goes my wife. So the vanilla needs to be added when? Okay, so vanilla doesn't get added just yet. Everything has been incorporated into the buoy, the sauce base. It's fantastic. Off to the side. I know before anyone says anything, I know there's raw eggs in there. Salmonella. Retrieve the silver fox. So we're gonna move on to cheese. We're gonna move on to whipping up the egg whites into stiff peaks. This is the important part. It's what makes a souffle a souffle. You need the stiff peaks. If you're not gonna get them, then you're not making a souffle. You're gonna need your best men on the floor for this one. So if you have just like the standard hand mixer, that'll do the job, great. The only thing I can't vouch for is with the hands, like whipping by hand. Uh, I've tried it before and failed. Yeah, I don't know, just use whatever you got. <laughs> The bowl's gotta be spotless. And if it's not, then you got problems, son. Yeah, you got problems. It'd probably be a good idea, turn on the oven. 400 degrees F. Into the bowl, egg whites from five eggs. So these are room temperature. And pinch of salt. So what I'm gonna do here is turn this on to a medium speed and get this going to like soft peaks area. And then once I've hit that, I'm gonna add in a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar and a tablespoon of sugar while this thing is running. And once that's added in, I'm gonna crank it up to high speed until we reached stiff peaks. Any questions? On one, two. We wanna get as much air into these egg whites as possible. Those are smooth, glossy, stiff ass peaks. No time to waste. Thank you. Firstly, let's add in the base of the souffle into the separate bowl, cause I just wanna, I just need a clean bowl to get this started here. The more I'm looking at these egg whites, the more I realize that I, I push these too far. We're past the stiff peak phase. They're super sturdy but that is not correct. These are not smooth and glossy. They are just overdone. They're like clouds, but I can't risk everything on this. Also, my hands have been in them. So I'm just gonna start fresh. I got it. So I'm not really pissed off about that because I'm glad I found it when I did. I would have been more pissed off if I had wasted all of this in those stiff peaks. So with a bowl of warm water, I have very cold eggs that I need to bring them up to room temperature ASAP because I don't want to wait around uh, for like an hour, just into the bowl. And that's probably gonna take what, five minutes? Let me read the quick hack I was reading again. Uh, five minutes, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I 
egg whites, pinch of salt. Almost there. That's stiff peaks. Yep. In my souffle base, uh, yeah, it's still hanging out. Still wondering what the hell's going on. Introduce a little bit of the stiff peaks into the base. There's just two different textures at play. So you wanna make sure that you've combined them both, got the whole party started, and then once you got, you got the A-OK, -okay, you add everything else. But you can do it a little more gentle than you were doing it. Fold the egg whites into the base. Here we go. Into the buoy. So I'm just bringing the spatula all the way to the bottom and flipping it over. And then like rotating at the same time. I forgot about the rotate. To the bottom, flip it over, rotate. Over mixing is gonna destroy some of these air bubbles that you work so hard to get into the stiff peaks. So do not do that. So my souffle molds, remember them? And then let's add this mix into each ramekin. All the way to the top. Julia says to fill it up an inch and a quarter from the top, which is basically this whole ramekin. I think she's using some, she's using something much bigger than I am for a mold. Yeah, I'm gonna just go off book for a bit because I was watching a video on how to do this instead. And it's not a Julia video, sorry, Julia. Uh, it was a Claire video, completely flat in the tops. And you can make messes right now because I'm gonna clean it all up in a second anyway. There's like this little lip in the inside of the ramekin that I'm just dragging my thumb across but not too firmly to kind of separate the souffle mix from the mold on the very top. Why did I make such a mess on the outside of these? I really wish I didn't make a mess. You're wasting precious time right now. In this video, I was watching Claire. She sprinkles a little sugar on the very top of these souffles and that kind of encourages a little rising and a little crunchiness on the very top. So I'm just gonna try that out. Why not? Keep their distance on the baking tray. They need their distance. Into a really hot oven. Okay, so that was initially at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, but I turned it down to 375 once I added the souffles. I think the souffles just need that like initial punch in the face of like high heat just to get the whole cooking process started. And then, you know, you turn it down so that they can start cooking all the way through rather than just like burning. That's my theory. Now this whole process is gonna take 30 to 35 minutes. <sighs> right here is vanilla. And it was sitting right over here, off frame. And I was supposed to add that into the mix right before I added the stiff peaks into the base. Now the souffles are halfway to Mars and the vanilla is still to my Larry. So if that made any sense to you, please let me know. The souffles are looking real nice. I've never got them this high before, um, but I have 10 minutes left in the baking and uh, they look done now. I really think I need to get these out. I don't know why I sat down here. Seven and a half minutes early, but yeah, they're not, yeah, they gotta come out. All right, so here we go. One, two, three. Order up. To possibly a new trend. What have I done? One shot, two shot, three shot, floor. <laughs> Oops. Uh, it's delicious. It is really nice. It's the best souffle I think I've ever had, but I've never actually had a souffle that wasn't made by me. So <laughs> take that for whatever it's worth. Uh, in terms of the coffee taste, it's not too much and it's not too little. It's like right in the sweet spot. And I was worried at first that I, was, I wasn't adding enough, but it, it's, it's beautiful. So uh, I wouldn't change a thing in terms, it wasn't too bitter and it wasn't like, what, what am I eating here? It was fluffy and airy and like a pillowy bite to it. And did you see the height? Did you see the height of those souffles? That's the highest I've ever been able to get it. So uh, it's like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm measuring here. 
but <laughs> stop that. Every single time I've ever made a souffle, they always dome on the very top, and I was working on this, but I think I was able to flatten out the very surface of it. So I think that also was a-okay. Could have used a little vanilla, but that's neither here nor there. You could chug it right now if you wanted to, to make yourself feel better. Shit, it's expensive. Take what Julia says in the cookbook. She says, bake it for 30 minutes. I'd take off 10 minutes of that, so it's only in 20 minutes. That's what I would say. I've already made this thing twice now. I'm not gonna go for the hat trick. It's out of my hands now. It's up to every single one of you. So if you're gonna make it, make sure you um, share it with me, and then I will share it out, and we'll get the ball rolling. It's gonna go out to everyone. And next thing you know, coffee souffle is on the front page of New York Times cooking. I can see it happening. And then it will disappear into the ether, along with the TikTok pasta. Uh, but that's what happens. It's a short shelf life, but they'll be back. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about anymore. I'm just gonna wrap it up. That's all I have today. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Or from. It's go time. Finishing touch here, but a little coffee on top. That was too much.